Go there in Luke chapter 2 in your Bible. Luke chapter 2. Go there in your Bible. We're going to jump in. And we are talking today about the good news of Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verse number 8. And I think that today and tomorrow is a cause for great celebration. In fact, that's the title of my message today, right down the title. I want to talk to you about a cause for great celebration. And I just want to know from the beginning, where are my party people at? Where are the partiers in the house? I know you're louder than that, so I'm going to ask again. Where are my party people at? All the type B quiet people just got embarrassed. It's like, oh, my family's so loud. But I like, I like celebrating and I like that we serve a God that is celebratory. You know, in the Old Testament, God would be so faithful. He would do something miraculous and he'd say, stop for one week and I want y'all to party and celebrate how good I am. I think that sometimes it's good for you to pause and celebrate how good God's been. Has God been better to you, to you than you deserve? Has he been greater to you than you imagine? I think it's a cause. Today is a cause for celebration. And I love, I, I like being, I'm married to someone that's always looking to party. Julia's looking for an excuse to throw a party. Anything. She, our kid could get like his first B in class. We're going to party. We're going for ice cream. We, that hasn't happened yet, but I'm believing for the day. And so, but she's always looking to party. She's a walking party. And I, you, you know, graduation day, it's a party day. You know, someone, someone, someone uh, has a baby, you, you throw a baby shower. It's a party day. You know, someone gets married, it's a party day. Birthdays, who loves to celebrate birthdays? Yeah, in L.A., it's not a day, it's a week. It's a whole week. Four self-thrown parties for themselves in Los Angeles. It's, it's a cause for celebration. It's a cause for festivity. Today is a cause for the party of the year. He is the only child that has been born that the world shuts down for to celebrate. That when this guy was born, everybody wanted to celebrate. Finally, our king has come. Finally, our savior is here. Finally, the hope for humanity, the one the prophets had foretold, the one that the world had waited on, the one that everybody was, the Messiah has come. And watch in Luke chapter 2, watch how the angel announced how the celebration in order, how it should go. It says this in Luke 2 verse 8, Now there was in the same country shepherds living out in the fields. That's like now people living in Rancho Cucamonga, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel of the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news, good tidings of great joy. There's that joy word, which will be to all people. Anybody thankful that the gospel of Jesus is not limited to one nation or one tribe or one tongue? Anybody grateful that it's for the whole world? It's for anybody that's walking and breathing who is a child of God. It will be to all people, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward God. Men, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. The reason why the celebration should be so festive is because this was peace and good news towards us. That this gift was given to you and to I. It wasn't for a select few. It wasn't for people at the country club. It wasn't for those that hit a certain threshold of tithing dollars. It was good news towards all men. This is a cause for celebration. And I know you love to party. I hope that tonight you have the best Christmas Eve. Come on, anybody excited to unwrap our tamales? Come on, all the Hispanics in the house say amen. Andale pues, carnal, vamonos. Mi vida loca. That's all I got. I 
I hope you party tonight and you have a great celebration with your family and you know the rules. The Bible says tonight you can open one Christmas present. <laughs> Anyone that opens more than one outside of the will of God. <laughs> but I hope you party and you celebrate. But it's not about the gifts under the tree. It's about acknowledging the greatest gift that we have ever received, and it is the person, Jesus Christ. And this is a cause for great celebration because it represents three things. I'm going to give you three good news today. Write down number one. It's good news that we have peace with God. Look at verse 10. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Well, what's the good news? The good news is that you were once an enemy of God, but now because of Jesus, you're a friend of God. You are not opposed to God. God is not opposed to you. God actually, because of Jesus, the Bible says there used to be a wall of separation. God was on one side. Humanity was on the other side. But God so loved the world that he gave his one and his only son that if anybody should believe in him, they will not perish but have everlasting life. That through belief in Jesus, I am now made right with God. God. I want to encourage you today to ask God for anything you want. I want to encourage you, as the Bible says, to ask, seek, and knock, because right now you are in right standing with the Father. The Father used to have anger or animosity. God, the, the wrath of God was among you and upon you because you and I are sinful people. We have been born into sin. We can't help ourselves but sinning. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so God, because of his, his love, he knew that you and I could never be in right standing without Jesus. And so he sent his perfect son. He sent a perfect sacrifice. He sent the perfect lamb of God to take our place, to wipe out our debt, and to die on our behalf. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. I love this. Ephesians chapter 2 says this, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So God, God, because of his great love, but God, but God who is rich in mercy. You see, aren't you thankful today? He's not rich in wrath. He's rich in mercy. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love. I don't know if you knew this today. God loves you so much. God loved you so much. He sent his one and his only son to die on the cross for your sins. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love for us, he sent his one and only son. So now because of Jesus, I can stand in front of the Father and his wrath has been removed. When God looks at you, he can't even see you. All he sees is his son. All he sees is Jesus. So you are in perfect standing before the Father. Anybody thankful today that we can have confidence and boldness in front of the Father because of the love of Jesus? You have been made right. You have peace with God. This is a big deal. To have God in opposition, listen, I'm fine to have some opposers and some enemies and even this Christmas, some frenemies. That's fine. But I just don't want God to be against me. Somebody say amen. So the fact that God is for me and the fact that God is with me and the fact that I have peace with God brings me great courage. This last week, uh, we took our family to see the new Wonka movie, the Willy Wonka movie. And I, 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 I saw the, the old one, the OG one. That was much creepier than the new one. Because and, and, The reason why I didn't want is I skipped the Johnny Depp one because of how creepy the old one was. But we saw the new one. We took the, the kids to go see the new one. And who would have thought that, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that, that they kind of reinvented the thing. Who would have thought they put Hugh Grant as the Oompa Loompa? And this man is orange as the, he looked like he's from Florida. 
So, so Hugh Grant's in the new one, and he's the Oompa Loompa. And the whole premise, I don't want to spoil, so you've seen it, but I don't want to spoil the whole new one. But the whole thing about Hugh Grant, the Oompa Loompa in the new one, is that he's pursuing Wonka to make things right, to make amends. Wonka owes him. So he's not going to leave Wonka until his debt has been paid. He's upset. And he's a justice guy. And he's pursuing Wonka. He's basically saying, you owe me. And until you pay, you're not good. I'm grateful that I owed God, but Jesus paid the price for me. And the wrath has been removed, not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus has done. Come on, on Christmas Day, let's clap and honor our Lord and our Savior. Come on, West Side, join us. Let's thank Jesus. I have peace with God. And my peace with God is not because I pray or I read my Bible or because I tithe. No, I do those things because of what Jesus has already done for me. I cannot earn it. I cannot deserve it. It is not striving. It is not religiosity. It is all receiving the gift of God. Receiving the love that is found in Christ Jesus. So the good news to us this Christmas is number one, oh, I'm thankful I have peace with God. I've stand, I'm standing in front of the Father, and he's not mad at me. He's not upset at me. He's not so disappointed in me. If you need to know today, this Christmas, God loves you. God is for you. God is with you. God is in your corner. God is going to fight your battles. You're at peace with your heavenly Father. And the good news to us is that God accepts me. Why does he accept me? Because of Jesus. And he made him who knew no sin to become sin for me that I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And by the way, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of your believing, not because of your behavior. The moment you believe in Jesus, you're made righteous. And when you're made righteous, you can stand in front of God and ask anything. You can ask anything. You say, God, well, sorry, there's only two things that God will not answer when you pray. And that is Clipper and Cowboy fans. Everybody else, it's all in bounds. <laughs> but I just don't want Clipper fans going home and be like, he said that if I prayed, a miracle would happen. You guys are doing great in December. Call me in June. <laughs> Call me in June. Cowboys are playing great. Let's talk in a couple weeks. I can ask anything from my father. Why? Because I have peace with God. You need to know today, God's not so disappointed in you. God's not so frustrated with you. God's not mad at you. God looks at you and sees Jesus. Because Jesus paid the price for you. The first time John the Baptist sees Jesus, he, he jumps back. And he says, whoo! Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is the Messiah. This is Jesus, the one that all the prophets had been talking about. Look at what Isaiah talked about Jesus. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Come on, all the prophets, the whole world was waiting. So when the shepherds heard of it and the wise men heard of it. By the way, anytime there's great celebration, it means there was great sacrifice and great suffering to get to the celebration. Oh, today we've got to acknowledge Mary, that when the angel of the Lord talked to Mary, she had the spiritual maturity to trust the angel of the Lord. Oh, today we've got to acknowledge Joseph, that when, the, his, when his wife told him, who he had never been with, that she was pregnant, and when the angel spoke to him, we got acknowledge Joseph, that Joseph had the maturity and the perseverance to go through with the, these things without blowing the whistle. Oh, we got to trust that, that the angel of the Lord showed up to these shepherds and prepared them for what God wanted to do. You can't have a great celebration without a great process of sacrifice and surrender. We're celebrating today because we waited and waited and endured for the Christ, our Savior, to be born. It's a cause for great celebration. Number one, I've got peace with God. Number two, write down, good news, I've got peace within. In my soul. 
You know how some people live with great angst, great inner turmoil. Just that inner struggle, that inner wrestle, that inner, oh, what you, ah, yeah. That was kind of fun. And because of salvation, when salvation gets on the inside of you, when salvation gets on the inside of you, the Bible says, he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. I've got peace within me. I've got peace because I'm good with God. I'm good with me. In fact, it's not even just the confidence of being comfortable in my own skin. It's that I've got the peace and the joy of Jesus on the inside. I want to let you know our God does an inside job before he ever does an outside job. He does something. Come on, let's look at this verse. Look at Luke chapter 2 and watch what he says. He says in verse, uh, verse 11, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The Messiah the chosen one, and Jesus does not do an exterior work. Jesus does an interior work. That's why he was always so frustrated with religious church people. He says, the problem with you church folk is that you're always cleaning the outside of the dish, but the inside is filthy. He said, I wish you'd change it. Change the inside of your life. It will affect the outside of your life. See, it doesn't matter how fancy your clothes is. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't matter how clean your house is. If the inside of your life is not clean, if the inside of your life doesn't have peace, God is so good. Grace doesn't inner work. Grace does an inner healing. Grace does an inner freedom. Grace does an inner surrender. I've got peace with God. I've got peace with me. Who cares if you get a bunch of stuff? What if you had the perfect Christmas and for this Christmas you get uh, 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 this house and, and, and this car and you get this amount of money? The, all of those things can't get you peace within. That's why Jesus is the greatest cause for celebration because when I get Jesus on the inside, he starts working on the outside. That's why everything with following God is authentic. That's why everything with following God is genuine. Our joy is genuine. Our peace is sincere. Our compassion is real. Those aren't stats on a screen. That's how we're living our life because of the peace within. It doesn't matter if you get a bunch of stuff if you don't got peace on the inside of you. My, my family's in town for Christmas, and, and, and so we celebrated last night. We did our Christmas dinner uh, last night, and we had a great celebration. And my mom, everybody clap for my mom right here in the front row. We call her Mimi. Mimi's in town. And Mimi came in, because uh, she's an educator. She's a school teacher for years. Mimi came in with a game. She had a game. She wanted to play a game. So, you know, the rest of the family just goes, Mimi's rules, okay. She's in my house, but Mimi rules. And so, come on. Um, so, huh, what was that? So, let's keep it on Jesus. So, uh, uh, so anyways, um, um, so she had a game. And so uh, she had all these strings on the counter, and she had an order of, you know, uh, 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 each, each family member coming up. And each family member got to choose a string. And behind the string, where you couldn't see, was a number. Okay? So you come up. Let's say there's ten strings. And I choose the second string. That's number two. And under number two, there's a gift. Well, the gifts ranged from like uh, maybe gift number two was a bag of Cheetos. But gift number six was some oils and $20 cash. We thought that was good until string number eight. String number eight was titled Grandpa Ben, her father, my grandfather, Grandpa Ben, who had a lot of money. <laughs> and so the moment she said Grandpa Ben, I knew what was behind that one. <laughs> now, the problem was, though, that my eight-year-old chose number eight, and he don't need no money. And so he got the envelope, and he opened up a $100 bill. When my man got a $100 bill, in his head, that's $1 million. <laughs> That's a million dollars, a million whole dollars, not a million Bitcoin dollars, a million dollars. He went nuts. I'm rich. I'm rich. He's running around my kitchen. I'm rich. In my head, I'm like, wait till I make you tired, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 10% goes to Jesus. We're going to raise you right. You might have a church wound, but you're going to be raised right. If I gave
save you a million dollars doesn't bring you peace within. It's Jesus and the reality of the gospel and the good news of the Messiah that brings us peace within. And I want to encourage you, don't chase peace that's on the outside. That if I get my whole life lined up and I get this lifestyle or career or I get this, that, or the other. No, if you get Jesus, you get peace. If you get Jesus, you get joy. If you get Jesus, you get wisdom. If you get Jesus, you get strength. All you need this Christmas is the hope for your humanity. His name is the Messiah, Christ our Savior. Come on, clap a little bit louder. Let's just thank Jesus. It's peace within. Watch what the Bible says if you get peace within. Look at Proverbs. Look at this beautiful verse in Proverbs chapter 15. A merry heart makes for a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So you see people that have a big smile. You see people that are carrying joy. And you see people that just, it's effortless, their smile. What is it? It's not their smile, it's their heart. You see someone that's hard to smile. You see someone that's going through a hard time. See someone that's down. What is it? It's not their mouth. It's not their, it's not their smile or lack thereof. It's their heart that's broken. It's an inside job that affects an outside life. And I want to encourage you to allow Jesus to heal you. Allow Jesus to free you. Allow Jesus to forgive you. Don't walk in shame this Christmas. Don't beat yourself up or berate yourself over past mistakes. No, allow God to bring peace within I'm really happy about where I'm at. I'm really happy about where I'm going. I'm really happy about what God's doing in my life. And I know I can't see everything and everything doesn't really make sense yet, but I got faith that in time, God's gonna work out the details. I got hope that God is for me and that God is with me. And I'm gonna trust in God and look to God because I got peace within me that he's my savior. I got peace within me that he's in control. And I know that maybe last chapter had some bumps and some bruises. I don't know about your last year, but I think for every one of us, we could say it was the best worst year of my life. How was 2023? It was the best, worst year of my life. You know what 2024 is going to be? The best, worst year of your life. Because every year has highs, and every year has lows, and every year has good things, and every year has bad things. But the one that's faithful, and the one that's true, and the one that's consistent is a man named Jesus. So if I got peace within, I could go through the mountaintop of success or the valley of despair, and I can praise him, and I can worship him, because I know that God is with me. Come on, give him a praise if you're grateful for the goodness and the greatness of our our God. So good news, good news. I've got peace with God. Good news. I've got peace within. I'm carrying peace. Why am I a non-anxious present? Because I hang out and I've got the one who is the ultimate non-anxious presence. He's working on the inside. You go, well, my situation has to do with tons of anxiety. Yeah, but if you keep letting the gospel work in your life, I want to encourage you and I want to remind you the gospel still works. The gospel's not broken. The name of Jesus has all the power and all the authority in your life. You keep speaking it over your children, keep speaking it over your life, keep speaking it over your future. Amen? Amen. I got peace with God. I got peace within. And write down the last one, good news. Worship team, you come join me. I got peace with others. I got peace with others. Look at this last verse, Luke chapter 2. And what did he say at the end of this announcement? Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. See, the peace of God is directed somewhere. The peace of God is not floating like an angel, floating like a cloud floating like someone that just left Burning Man? Trying to find someone to find? The peace of God's not swiping right. The peace of God's at you. And it finds you. And it brings peace within you. But it never stops with you, does it? The peace of God always allows you to make peace with others. Now, I think this is where a lot of us get, get, get in trouble. A lot of our selfishness kicks in. We're like, hey, I got mine. I'm good, man. 
yo, pastor, just chill. I'm good. Like I got mine. God's, I'm good with God. God's good with me. God's my judge. Only God can judge me. I'm good with God. Like I got peace on my pillow. Yeah, 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 but you're missing out on the most important and most exciting part of all this peace. And that's not just that I have peace with God or that I got peace on the inside, it's that I got peace in my relationships. I got peace with other people. In fact, that's why the Bible says, he makes my cup runneth over. He gives me so much peace that it would be impossible for me to keep it inside of me. It would be impossible for me to selfishly just leave it to me. No, I've got to share it with my friends and my family. I've got to share it with my loved ones and my coworkers. I've got to share it with the people that I'm having Christmas meals with. Why? Because I've got so much peace from God that it's flowing out of my life and it's flowing into my relationships. That's how you know the gospel is working in you is that it starts to work through you. This last December, a year ago this time, we were in Jakarta, Indonesia. Julie and I were preaching at a church over there, and they asked us to come uh, speak at a marriage conference in Bali and then to the church service in Jakarta. And we were with Pastor Jeffrey Rockman, one of my favorite churches in the whole world in Indonesia called JPCC. One of our keyboard players on the West Side today, I think he's playing on the West Side. Kavos is from this church. It's one of the most brilliant churches on the earth and thousands and thousands of people, multiple locations all over Jakarta. And Jeffrey Rock, he's kind of like a hero to me. And so we went to the Sunday morning, I was preaching and just the crowds, it's just, un, it's staggering to behold. And so we went to lunch afterward. I was just asking Pastor Jeffrey after the service, how did you do this? And what is this thing? Talk to me about all this. And he said, God spoke to me years ago and told me to only focus on three things. And this has been for 30 years, our focus. God told me to focus on my stewardship, my leadership, and my relationships. And I thought, wow, that's powerful. Because I love stewardship. I'm a big, come on, we had one of our series, Steward Little. I love stewardship. I love leadership. We've got a podcast, Leadership Lean In. But I got to tell you, as soon as he said relationship, I kind of went, because that's the hardest one. Because that requires forgiveness. That requires commitment. That requires honesty. That requires humility. Leadership. Yeah, let's go. Stewardship. Oh, I'm going to. Relationship. Vulnerability transparency good news peace on earth goodwill towards men don't let your peace stay within let your peace flow outside forgive somebody this Christmas let it go it's not worth it I feel the spirit of frozen in this house let it go Stop holding on to that animosity and that anger and disappointment. It's affecting you more than it's affecting them. And I just figure, oh, we ought to follow what the Bible says. Look at these scriptures. I love this in 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and the God of peace will be with you. I just love that because this Christmas, I don't want to just unwrap a bunch of gifts or give a bunch of gifts. I want to give encouragement. I want to give restoration. I want to give my love. I want to give my best to others. It, don't think that if you just give someone a gift from Nordstrom, you're good. No, give them your attention. Give them your affection. Give them your praise. Give them the, your love. Give them, give them what's due to them. Honor them. Love them. Bless them. That's what Jesus would do. This is a cause for celebration. And I don't know what, what Christmas songs you're going to play tonight. I don't know. I've been going through Spotify. I do a little jazz. I mix in a little Christmas country. And every once in a while I get the salsa Latin Christmas music going in. Julia does her best dancing when the Latin stuff goes on. It's all for Julia. But let's celebrate. I got peace with God. I got peace on the inside. To the best of my ability, I've got peace with others. I don't got any enemies. Why? Because God told me every time I pray, ask God, forgive me of my sins. 
Oh, Jesus, forgive me and help me to forgive those that have sinned against me. If someone hurt you, someone wronged you, maybe you were abandoned this last year, abused, maybe you were hurt, forgive them. It's nowhere in the scripture that God goes, well, if you deal with that, no forgiveness, we get it. No, he says, forgive, forgive, forgive. Father, forgive me of my sins and, and help me to forgive those that have sinned against me. Amen. It's a cause for great celebration. Why don't we stand to our feet?